Acres Island being dubbed Horror Island mm. by local leaders who visited the facility yesterday to see the conditions inside the jail. Mayor Bill de Blasio says the city has poured money into Rikers to try and fix these problems to no end. We have invested a huge amount to try to fix that situation, even in a place bluntly we shouldn't be in anymore. I've been working to change the situation in a place that's just profoundly broken it, that should have been closed a long time ago. And we are closing it. Rikers Island is not expected to shut down for another six years. So Congressman Jamal Bowman says we cannot wait until then to address the issues at the jail that he saw yesterday, in fact. Yeah, he joins us this morning now to discuss what needs to be done. So good morning, Congressman Bowman. Thank you for making the time this morning about this. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So, so Congressman, we heard from public advocate Jamani Williams just about an hour ago about some of the horrendous conditions that you endured yesterday while you were there and witnessed. You know, the city has poured money into Rikers every single year. Did you see any evidence of that when you toured the facility yesterday? Well, it's obviously a complex situation. You have a combination of hundreds of employees there calling out of work on a daily basis. You have an increase of people who are occupying uh, Rikers Island mm -hmm. uh, as inmates. So you have a lack of health care. You have a lack of food distribution. You have a lack of space. Yeah. Um, and all these things are converging um, at the same time. But I think there's a mindset that goes into building the infrastructure uh, designed to care for people who are incarcerated mm -hmm. and that mindset is contributing to the deplorable and inhumane conditions that that we saw there yesterday i mean just imagine you know think about your uh bathroom the bathroom in your home and think about filling it to capacity with people that's what some of the yeah. jail cells looked <laughs> like yesterday there was someone standing in a shower stall jail cell. So think of a shower stall, mm -hmm. not a bathtub, shower stall where you can only stand but jail cell, a box. Uh, and he was so traumatized uh, by it, uh, he, was, he, he was mute. And you saw yeah. people were defecating on themselves and mm. there was urine everywhere. Many people reported not having mental health instability uh, issues and not being able to get the services. So, you know, we need new facilities, we need a new mindset, and we need to take a mental health approach and a behavioral health yeah. approach. Um, and, and we also need one last thing I want to say before your next question. There are many people in there who are there because of technical parole violations, right. and other technicalities that should not be in there, and they need to be mm -hmm. decarcerated as quickly as possible. There's a lot of issues at hand right now, Congressman, and I want to ask you, you named some of the things that you saw. We also heard from um, public advocate Williams that there was an attempted suicide, that there were weapons uh, that were dropped on the floor. Attention had to be taken to that. Um, it, it was just horrendous. How is it, though, that this is going on, especially with the kind of money that's being put into Rikers? Well, it's, it's not just an issue of money. It's how that money is being invested and allocated exactly i mean if we're not if we're not also investing in protecting the employees that work there um they're not going to come to, to work and that's what we're seeing now we're seeing hundreds of people calling out of work on a daily basis because they are afraid for right. their lives is one of the reasons so the money's not being invested in a way where we are keeping people safe but i have to say that physical facility Remember, my background is education. So yeah. whenever I walk into a space where people need help, I always think from an education perspective. Where are the mental health professionals? Where are the psychologists, psychiatrists, the healthcare providers, the educators, the people who are who committed crimes, who are now being held accountable? They come from very tough circumstances, yeah. and they need a lot of support, so, and a lot of resources. And none of those resources are being provided. So, Congressman, I, I visited Rikers a number of years ago, right? This, what, are the, what you're describing and the questions you're asking are what people were asking then. So what can be done now and today, right? So we're not in this hamster wheel of the same problems that we know exist but aren't being taken care of. So to my knowledge, there is a piece of legislation at the state level uh, that is looking to decarcerate 
uh, much of young uh, Rikers. Uh, it's called the Less Is More Act. Uh, it passed the assembly. It passed the state house. Uh, now it's at the governor's desk. That will stop us from reincarcerating people for technical parole violations. There are many others who are there for very low-level offense, not violent mm -hmm. crimes, not murder or attempted murder mm -hmm. or rape, uh, who are there because they simply couldn't afford bail. We have to provide other spaces for them. That will decrease the numbers by hundreds and make it more manageable and, and safer for people to return to work. So those things can happen this week. Um, we have to pr provide other spaces for people, and we have to pass the legislation that has already passed both chambers at the state level so that we can decrease uh, the numbers by hundreds, because the numbers are way too big to even manage. Yeah. It's a ticking time bomb. Yeah, it, it's, it we like were it. standing, we were, I mean, you mentioned, Jamani mentioned the knife that fell, yeah. correct. The attempted suicide, uh, correct. Um, and also, there was a moment where we were in this corridor, me and the other elected officials, with law enforcement agents on, on our right and on our left, in between us and the people who are incarcerated there. And that could have exploded. Thankfully, the, the people who were incarcerated, they just wanted us to hear their story. So they were not, they did not threaten us. They, they did not seek to harm us. They just wanted us to hear their stories. And that's what we did. And that's how we have a full picture mm -hmm. of what needs to take place. Congressman, that, that is definitely a crisis situation, as told by you. I want to shift to another one as people experience it individually. Let's talk about Ida and recovery efforts there. Um, what is being done to get people the help that they need to rebuild? Yeah, so um, a lot has already been done. Um, the governor moved really swiftly to ask Washington for help and FEMA for help. Uh, the, the president responded quickly to declare it a, an emergency. So FEMA has been on the ground uh, in Mamaroneck assessing the situation to provide support for people. What we're asking people to do who are impacted by Ida across the region, but in my district in Westchester and in the Bronx, please document every dollar spent. Yeah. Please take as many pictures as possible. This is really, really important. Please file uh, an insurance claim. That's also very important. And then there are FEMA resources to file for. And that's why my office uh, is holding a town hall this evening where you could dial in or log in so we can walk everyone impacted through the steps okay. of relief, whether it's from FEMA or insurance. And it's important because people think because they don't have flood insurance, right. there are no options for them. That's not true. People think because they don't have car insurance or or only li liability insurance, there's no options for them. That's also not true. Okay. So it's important to log in this evening so our team can walk you through all of the resources that are available. Really good information mm -hmm. there for so many who need it. Congressman Bowen, thank you for making the time this morning to talk about two important issues. Thank you for having me. Good Appreciate to see you, it. Congressman. All right, it has